Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the episode of Pat T's Performance. Today in the back of the Honda, I have two mowers that I picked up. One was free. That is right. That's uh, practically a parts machine. Uh, but it is what it is. I already have plans for it. It has a good engine on it. And that's all that matters. Oh, and it came with the bag. This one I had to pay for. But what I liked about it, which I didn't know, check this out. The guy never used the lawn mower. So the bag is brand new, winner winner, and it came with another frame. Chicken dinner. So as you guys know, lawn mowers around here with no bag equals no doll hairs. So with the bag, it's worth a couple of bucks. Now it comes with a frame. Buying a bag, 15, 20 bucks, it'll increase the machine's value by 75 or more. It's more very important. Actually, 75 to over 100. It's a self-propelled one mower. So uh, here we are. How are they going to fix this on in the back of the Honda? Just for poops and giggles. Has been used in quite some time. His exact words. He bought it, barely used it, hired a landscaper. There's just too much. Check the oil. Dirty. So there goes so much for using it much. has a lot of, uh, feel like surface rust, you know, and then we're going to make this mower, well, ah, we'll do it later, we'll do it later, we'll do it later, you guys might have an idea if you guys been with me for a while, you know exactly what I'm going to do to this machine, if, after we get run. So, let me get uh, some go-go juice and, and let's see what this thing needs. Alright. All right, so I set myself up. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull the spark plug, I mean, um, air filter cover off 516s, so we're gonna expose the air filter. So anyway, I bought a warm off another flipper. Again, the same one, who has trouble selling it. So I kind of like it because I think it's gonna be a common thing. I'm gonna get running lawn mowers at a fair price. Air filter is in good shape. This is no prime for a good time. Now just for, experimentation purposes and to see how desperate or if the spring sprint is still alive and well um I put it up for sale with no restyle I didn't even bother restoring it just a little restyle so the wheels are two different colors gray in the front I'm sorry gray in the back and black in the front I pulled the wheel caps off the front because they were damaged. Put it up for sale for 140, right? And I figured I'd save myself some trouble. Not one hit in 24 hours. And I says, all right, that's it. So before I left for work in the morning, pulled off the wheels, threw three coats of paint, so by the time I get home, it'll dry. Slap the wheels on, reworded the ad. Actually, not even there. I'm sorry. I redid the ad. Same, different pictures. Same thing, word for word. Same title. And I had it sold within the hour of posting it. But the guy wanted to come Friday. And you know how we do. We don't wait for nobody. Especially if it's a little lawnmower. It's not. No way. So, after that, that turned into somebody buying it today. A little bit of paint goes a long way. A little spray and pray, a little paint cap Picasso, it definitely works. All I did was match up the wheels to black. And I'll screenshot the wall mower and actually the guy behind it. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna put some go go juice in here and let's see what happens. Okay. 
Let's talk. So we need a few things for a gasoline engine to combust, right? If you guys are new to the channel, you guys start asking yourself this question. If you guys are not new to the channel, then say it with me. Say it with me. So I like to ram things home to you guys. In order to get this beautiful Briggs & Stratton 190cc Craftsman Gold engine to run slash combustion, we need air, which we bypassed, no air filter. We need spark, spark plug, okay? We need compression, and we need fuel. This is cheating with fuel. So if your lawn mower doesn't run, we just hit it with go-go juice and it ran. We just confirmed air, compression, and spark. So that means we need fuel for combustion slash running. So instead of taking this thing apart and trying to do all these crazy tests, <laughs> look at that. We just did them all and saved a lot of time. Now also what we're going to try and do, because we've had success with doing this, is we are just going to take apart carburetor nut quick and dirty. If you guys could see, there's a bowl nut underneath here. I'm touching it with my hand. We're going to take a half inch or a 13 millimeter and we are going to see if we can cheat and screw this nut off and just get away with cleaning it like this instead of taking it apart. So much for no gas. That is nasty. Alright, so I'm clamping the fuel on. No, it's too late. That's life. Stick that in there. Uh, before I was rudely interrupted by gas coming out. It didn't look like there was any gas in the tank. I'm going to clean this. And if you guys seen the color, I'm sorry, I don't know if the camera picked it up. It's a little yellowy. So it's old. So we'll just do that. Alright, you know what? It's actually not that bad. These are callable. Got a little bit of gelling right there. And here's our nut. It's actually really good. I think we're going to have a little winner. I mean a runner. And we're going to have a winner, winner, chicken parm dinner. Alright, so we're going to take a little pin. We're going to locate the middle of the carburetor. It's hard to see. We're just going to jam this keister. Oops. Right up the middle. I'll take you guys off the stand. And I'll show you. Hopefully you guys get a good view of this. I'm going to try can't see what the camera's seeing, but right in here. Come on. Very difficult to do. Right in the hole. Kind of like, uh, there we go. Life lessons right there. I'm just working this puppy up and down. And that's it. That's our quick and dirty for you. A little quickie. I like quickie. You guys like quickie? Alright, stick down the sign. Just give this bowl a quick wipe. 
it'll be just fine. And here are our jets, all right? So all I did was just here, right through here, right, see that? Right down here. And I blew in it. Ooh, this is good. It's gonna be easy. Uh oh. You know what I see is missing. Come on. Unless that's the crush washer. All right, I thought the gasket was missing, but this has a little crush washer on here. Hopefully, I'm seeing this right. So we'll put this back down here. Please start this by hand, this bone nut. Don't be an animal. Actually, when I do bone nuts by hand, something like this, I like to tighten it as much as I can. And then I come back with a ratchet. Come on. So I plan on, I know some of you guys are going to disagree with me on this. A lot of you guys who like to do what I do will hold on to a lawnmower as soon as they fix it. Not me. Now that with 24 hours do a cold start, I'll fix it. I'll flip it in the same day. Sorry. Remember, I only had one comeback so far this year, and that was due to uh, operator error. But that's okay, considering the times. Okay. Ah. Let's put our fuel filter, I mean our air filter back on. Now, Jason, what are you doing with the line still clamped? a good question. Obviously there was a little bit of gas left in here and I didn't want to come out into the Honda. I'm going to be brazen. And I am going to mix whatever little gas is in here with good gas. And we're going to be just fine. Come on. There we go. That's the winner. Five sixteenths, all right. Let me get this thing down. All right, let's put some gasolina in here. It's treated with stable. You guys noticing I'm not using sea foam because I'm out of it. <clears throat> and I don't feel like being bothered with social distancing. Nonsense, it is what it is. Put the cap on. Now we'll release the fuel flow. Oh look, it did not Son of a bitch. Ready? One, two, three. Fire and all.
Alrighty, so while that gets hot, new oil. Oh, you know what? I gotta prep it for cleaning. It's prep for cleaning. Let's put this bag on the correct way. This must go underneath here, like so. These little plastic bits go right over the frame. Now we have to go to the sides and do the same thing. And we are literally just working our way around. Around the world is what they say. <sighs> That's a spider web. Hi, baby spiders. Here we go. So. Come on, sweetheart. Uh -huh. Here we go. Just need to pull this back. We got ourselves a beggar, boys. 150 bucks. Here we come. Extra bonus. Nice and clean. One last thing to do, cosmetically. All right? Make this one mower look instantly better. Boom. Well, Jason, why'd you do that? Hello. Now this thing is down to two colors. Looks better already. I know Five Speed Ash would love these. Yeah. We could, this blade's in really good shape. We could definitely bring this back to life. So, we'll put that to the side. Let me go take some pictures. We're going to post this up for sale. Yeah, I know it's not done yet, but we'll get the bowl rolling. The plan is to put it up for sale. Then remember, there are the few people who want to buy the other one mower that missed out. Well, guess what one mower they're going to get? This one right here. So, excuse me. Ah, oh, it's dirty again. Alright, so we're just going to recondition the existing blade. Now, this is something I started this year. Okay. Because I increased my one mower prices. I used to sell push mowers for 130 bucks. So I increased it to 135 last year. 
and they sold way too fast. So this year, because <clears throat> we had a lack of winter per se, and if I service machines, the blade would get rusty. So you know what? To save me time and effort later on, I'm just going to start painting them with the 99 cent can paint from Home Depot. So you know what? For poops and giggles, let me try and up it. Boy, oh boy. 150 all season long. Hasn't stopped. So I netted myself quite a bit. Quite a bit. So why are we... <coughs> Corona. <coughs> I'm going to wire wheel this down, take all this rust off, expose it, and we'll go from there. This thing, oh, well, right here, let me show you my new toy. Picked this up last night. Has the wrong tubes on it, but I gotta see if this is bigger than the one I have. This is a 560 BFS Husqvarna. One of the, I think, this is the second biggest that they make. It's been a while since I read up on them. I think the next step up is the 580, and that's equivalent to the Red Max um, 8500. Do I have any cheapo paint out? Let's check this out. 99 cent quick color from Home Depot. Don't be a cheap prick. Just buy a case. It's thin. If you do a lot of volume like me, you're going to use it a lot. Get my new toy out of here so I don't get overspray. And this preserves the edge you just put on it. Right? In case one mower set. You never know how things are gonna slow down. Because even though the blade is sharp, right? I sharpened a blade before. One mower sits, go to sell it. The edge is still there, but now that bare edge is rusty. Because the metal's been exposed. And I try to send it to people. Now listen, yep, it's been sharpened, it's been sitting, but as soon as you cut your grass, guess what's going to happen? The rust is going to come right off. Nope. They don't buy it. So beforehand, I would never sharpen blades until I was meeting up with somebody. Now, this method, we're good to go. Alright, so while the blade's drying, right? Because engine oil should be nice and hot. We had it running for quite some time. Um, while I pressure washed it. So it should be still warm. Enough for my machine to suck it out. And that paint that I'm using is quick dry. Quick color. Dries quick. It's good. They're in your car. Because I moved it. So, let's take our dipstick out. See? Nasty, nasty. Pumping. Let's see, you can feel the heat. This oil is still hot. This is plastic that will get this hot. Oh, and this mower is January of 2013. 
doesn't look it, right? The guy who wants to buy it, he's got the message, says it looks brand new and he likes it. Okay. He was one of the guys who missed out on the first one. Yep, so this is sold for tomorrow. The same place, the same time I sold the last one. Forty-five of those. This looks like like a Regal Red Fennec, like a dark red. Remember the one we were talking about? Not the Troy Belt MTD Red. I like it. It's a sharp looking machine. Especially after I pulled those stupid wheel covers off. Yeah, man, that was just going to set the Oh, the muffler is called now. start another project, but I think we might go try and see if there's a free lawnmower still available. Scott Keller is going to be loving this long time. If you guys participate in our live, which you should, every 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Time, every Saturday morning when Mrs. Pat Tate's performance is on, you will see Scott Keller, a.k.a. Mr. Briggs and Stratton, and a few other small engine people, gurus, fans, Lovers. <laughs> Sorry guys, at this point, man, if you guys if you guys are enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's like here or there. And you guys will get updates on stuff like this every time I post. Do a little bit of everything around here. Damn. See how this thing changes? This thing is really cool. That's scary. Now let's give this a little tip. On its corner, let's we'll throw the oil in the sump zone. Top this thing off with uh, some fresh oil and <laughs> throw some paint on the handles. Oh, and we have to install a blade too because that's why we did the blade first. Because while this dries, right, as we change the oil, the blade will dry. That's it.
So I buy 30 weight oil in bulk from Walmart. It costs me $1.77 to change oil. And increases the value a heck of a lot more. Now I do have these air filters at a dollar because I bought them in a pack of a hundred. But guess what? After I clean this carburetor, this thing fired on the first pull. So I'm not changing the air filter. I'm not touching the spark plug. It means it's fine. Plus when we pulled off the air filter, it was pretty darn near clean. So we're going to leave it. Um, I used to change spark plugs on every machine. I could not get the cost to be reasonable. Which not makes any sense because I got air filters to be reasonable. But I have a buddy of mine who does the same thing as me. He's like, dude, you're freaking nuts. You know, mostly with snow blowers. He was telling me. It's like, dude, the spark plug's good. I'm sending it. You know? So I says, you know what? He's right. So last year, no, two years ago, when we had snow. I did 343 transactions. Times that by $2. That's how much money I saved by not changing the spark plug every time. I know, I know there are some machines I had to change them, but now we're just we're just talking out loud. You know, if I had to. We'll just give a rough idea. So let me show you. So let me show you why it's important that we recondition this blade and throw some paint on. Check out this man pajama. This thing looks freaking awesome. But here's the money shot. What do you see? Bottom, patent, and a model number. So when they do the 30 point inspection on this thing, oh my god, Jason. Looks brand new. Is that a brand new blade? No. But it's been reconditioned. So it's practically like new. Five minutes of my time. 99 cent paint. That's me. Extra. For 15 bucks. So I'm a fool. Not to do. Ready? Last step is option. I choose to do because this is the first thing that we see. Could you not? So let's take care of it. Maybe you guys know where I'm going with this. Obviously, if I'm taking this apart. Right. Taking the recoil out. Let's tighten these. Oh, look, this is on backwards. Dummy. I'm not moving the camera. Hopefully, this. It's the wrong way, Jose. Actually, this guy's name was Reginald. He was really nice. This is another guy. I forgot. There's another guy who wanted a hundred bucks for a lawnmower in pieces. Not running. He actually had vice grips on it. He should have been a, a not nice person and asked him, does the lawnmower come with vice grips? I don't know if he sold it yet. But this guy wanted 75. And the only reason why I did it is he was eight minutes from the house. And as you can see, 
I literally just turned forty dollars into one hundred and fifty with very little effort. Dollar seventy-seven in oil. That ninety-nine cent spray can will refinish a lot of machines. So that's written off a long, long time ago. Let's cover this so we don't get any overspray. Touch up these handlebars. It's the first thing they say. So I always paint them. MRO. This is a foreign one. Shake this up really, really good. And this is a gloss black. So right over everything, I just do one coat. This is good paint. And I like that cheap 90 cent, 99 cent Home Depot paint. And I have to do three coats. So I don't even waste my time. I used to. I stopped. doesn't even belong there in the first place. Let's get rid of that. We're not getting rid of it, we're just cleaning that one up. There's the recycle bin. Yes, the recycle. If you guys notice, right? I took pictures of that machine still what? That's the best that machine will look wet. But I also, so people don't feel like they got catfish, right? I do put a coat of shine on this. I'm not telling you my secret sauce, but it lasts a very long time after the machine is sold. Unlike ATF, doesn't leave a greasy uh, residue. Lasts just a little bit longer than that. Well, I'm not ready to give that up. Maybe when I hit a million subs. Believe it or not, I got that secret from another hooker that I buy equipment from. He can't sell it. So, unless you guys come across him, you'll find that out. So that's it, just one coat of paint. We'll be back in a little bit. I'm actually going to go see if that free snap is still available. Alright, so I went to go pick up the free lawnmower, and it's gone. Surprise, surprise. Oh, well. At least it gave us time for the paint to dry. Puppy's done. Everything hasn't dried yet, so I'm not gonna put a coat of shine on it. I might not even bother putting a coat of shine on it because that says it looks new. He doesn't buy it. I already got a message while we were away saying that they'll take it, but they'll pick it up tomorrow too. So since I have to bring this to work with me tomorrow. I told them, hey, listen, you know, if it doesn't work out with the other guy, it's yours. That's like, a little rusty. We don't care. We'll leave that. Yeah, this is a nice machine. That's $40. Should I try in, though? 
No, let's let's see what happens. Remember, I'm not going to show you what I do and what it is, but let me go mix it. And then we'll put the bag on for effect. There you go, baby. Tell me what you think. Coat of shine done. Done. Alright guys, that's it man. I'm wrapping this thing up. This is winner winner chicken dinner. Turn this $40 one mower into a $150 one mower. You want to be generous just because I'm with you guys? Half hour? If I wasn't with you guys? 15-20 minutes tops? But uh, if you guys found this video helpful or enjoying as much as I did, feel free to comment. Definitely smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Guess what? I will see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Performance. Later. Yeah.